crossing the finish line. And you better be able to see yourself crossing the finish line before you have to get up at 5.30 in the morning and go running in the cold and in the rain to start your training program. You have to know what you're going for. You have to know what the payoff is. So principle one is plain and simple. It's a very basic idea in life, but it hasn't historically been applied very often to financial services. And we think that this is a huge opportunity for all of you to use these cards with clients and to do that. We've had multiple success stories from financial advisors who have had clients that are stuck, that aren't making commitments to them, that aren't bringing the assets in even though they're right on the verge of doing it, that have used these cards uh, and, 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 and actually caused the client to make the decision to change their behavior. And here's where you can tell that story that Scott did about the advisor in Philadelphia that had the really tough $3 million client that was able to use these cards to get them to commit. Also in your package, you'll find another card with the orange background that has some additional questions called the vision clarifiers. And this will help you to be more specific about some of the pictures. It's just a way to add on and to build from the pictures uh, to get into some more detail. There are some fantastic questions there. One of, the, one of I think, the, the, the simplest and most revealing questions is the fifth one on there, which is, it's 10.30 Wednesday morning, you're 62 years old, what are you doing? It's a, bit, it's a very pointed question that gets people to think a little bit differently about what they're going to be doing during those, those times. Now, you might be thinking at this point, okay, this is great, interesting, cute exercise, I'm not really sure that I have time to do this. I'm a financial advisor, I'm busy, I have multiple demands. Do I really want to spend time sitting around my office showing people pictures? Which is a valid concern. So we wanted to make sure as we built this program that it would, in fact, benefit you and benefit your bottom line. So in order to do that, we brought in a partner named Ross Allen Prince, who is a foremost researcher on the high net worth marketplace in the U.S. And we brought him in to look at this issue in a very bottom line way. So what he did for us is he brought in and looked at 533 high net worth retirees. These are multi-millionaires. And these people, during the, er, 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 at the time of the study, had taken at least a million or more in rollovers uh, the prior 90, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, 90 days to 12 months to the year. And so they, they looked at this group they, uh, the advisors involved already had this money, but the question was, were these advisors able to get any more business? Beyond this $1 million investment, were the advisors able to gather more assets, get additional referrals, um, and also, what was the third thing? More assets. By additional assets. products. By additional products, products and services. So here's what we found out. First of all, these advisors were categorized into three general groups. The first one were what we call investment-only advisors. These were experts at evaluating the, the investment options for the client, focusing on asset allocation, had a very specific investment philosophy, as you might imagine. That's what they did. That's where their focus was. The second group were what we call distribution-oriented advisors. Now, follow me here. They did all the investment work. So they did that, but they added a second layer, this time of focusing on how the client would spend the money during retirement in the most strategic way. So what would the distribution planning look like? The third group we call lifestyle advisors. Now these folks, and, and, and remember this build, so they did all the investment work, they did all the distribution planning, but they added a third layer of talking to the client about their lives and how their money would affect their lives. Not just about how they would spend their money, but also how they would spend their time and how their financial situation could support that. So those were the three categories, and the goal again was to see if this had any impact on business. So the first area, as I mentioned, was how many additional assets were these advisors able to get? The investment advisors, beyond that initial million dollar chunk, were able to get uh, in additional assets about 4% of the time. So not particularly exciting, not particularly impressive. We did a lot better for the distribution advisors. They got additional assets 24% of the time. And we expected there to be a bump when we got to the lifestyle advisor definition, but we didn't expect, frankly, that it would be this much. It was almost unbelievable. But these folks got 
66% of the time additional assets that they were given to manage by these clients. So a huge, huge differential, a huge advantage to these lifestyle advisors. And we saw the same trend when it came to other financial services and products from the same advisor. Only 1% down here, 10% at the distribution level, and when we climbed up to this lifestyle advisor, they're getting additional product and service sales 57% of the time. Finally, this last area of referrals. The investment advisors only, investment only, got zero referrals in that following year. The distribution advisors got one unsolicited referral. The lifestyle advisor, once again, wins hugely with four additional uh, referrals from these investors. So there's just a clear pay payoff. 66% of the time they're getting more assets, 57% of the time they're selling additional products, and they're getting four times as many referrals. A huge advantage to these folks. And then the next question is obviously, well, how much competition do I have? Are these people everywhere? Is there a guy across the street doing the same thing as I am? And again, as you might expect, it's a surprise, but um, there aren't a lot of people, it's not a surprise rather, that are doing this. We have 53% of the universe of advisors that are just focusing on these investments. 37% focusing on distribution. Only 9%, only a 9% piece of that pie is doing what is so clearly an advantage to building their business. So it is what we call low-hanging fruit, easy to get, um, a huge, clear payoff, and a big opportunity for all of you in this room. All right, good job, Scott, give me a second here.